currently on YouTube, there are many videos that speak against the practice of giving tithes in the local church. And there, I haven't found any that really reassure people that they should be tithing in the church. It is the, what I see is a majority of people speaking up against the tithes. And they use all kinds of excuses. Uh, but then when you, and especially they say that tithing is not money, but it's uh, uh, crops or vegetables or whatever. Uh, but then when you ask them, uh, do they give to the church or, do, or they, they say, yeah, we give to the church. We don't tithe, but we give to the church. And then I ask them, do you give groceries or do you give, uh, uh, you know, crops? What do you give? They go, no, we give money. So then there is a double standard there where they're teaching that tithing is not money. But when it comes to offerings, they say it is money. It can be anything, clothing, money, food, whatever. But they include money in there. So that's a double standard. Now, with the uprising of so many unscrupulous pastors and evangelists that have their TV programs or YouTube or whatever and have gotten very rich, some of them are millionaires, I understand why many people would look down on tithing to the church and they'll say, all we're doing is making these people rich because they see this unscrupulous pastors and evangelists who instead of knowing when to cut off the tithings as their salary and give more to the church and give more to the people, give more to the poor and so forth, they continue receiving more money. Of course, some of them, you know, they use their tithings and they start businesses and that's how they get rich. So there's all different kind of scenarios. But what I'm saying is that a lot of people do not not want to give money to the church because they believe that all these uh, pastors and evangelists are really trying to get the money, all the money, to themselves. That's what's happening. Whether it's true or not, that depends on the situation. But let me tell you, as a pastor of a local church, a small church that's starting out, we, have, we struggle because of this teaching that there's no tithings in the church. And what we see here is that uh, the te this teaching is affecting those who want to do good. Small local churches are always in need of more blessing because they're small and they're growing and they want to help the community and so forth. And so teaching against tithes, it's really an attack of the enemy. Uh, as a pastor, I can tell you that all those who tithe in our church are very blessed by God. And this is one thing that I've seen through so many years, over 40 years. Those, I see the difference between those Christian members who tithe and those who don't. And those that tithe are always blessed beyond. And they're blessed with their jobs, uh, job security or better job, uh, homes and so forth. They're blessed in many ways. But these people are givers. They tithe and they give offerings. They, they love the local church and they love their pastors and elders. And so I see a tremendous blessing coming on those who tithe. I also want to share my story. How when I first started in my Christian walk, you know, no one taught me on tithes. And so as a result, I was not a, a tither. I never gave my tithes. I gave offerings and so forth. But as time went on, I struggled just to make ends meet. But when I married my wife, my wife was so awesome in that she believed God and she was always giving tithes to the church and so forth. And she told me, let's, let's start tithing to the church now that we're married. And I told her, no, I don't believe in that. It, the tithe, and I gave all the, the, the attacks, all the excuses that the people on YouTube that are against tithings that they give also. I, I told them about the tithes was under the law and we were not under the law. And I kept going on and on and on with all those things. But as the years passed by, we struggled and struggled and struggled. And I said, Lord, what's wrong with this picture? 
Finally, one day I told my wife, because she kept always telling me year after year, let's tithe. And, and she would tithe of hers, but it wasn't the whole tithe. So finally, I told my wife, I'm going to do it. I'm going to start tithing. Even though I don't believe that the scriptures teach New Testament tithing, I'm going to tithe. And lo and behold, right after that, as we started tithing, first, there was a couple of blessings that came our way unexpectedly. And then it kind of mellowed out, and we just kept going, going. And then all of a sudden, God started prospering us and prospering and blessing us financially and with job security and things going well instead of me uh, spending the money uh, on things that I had to to that I owed now I had money to spend on things that I wanted I saw a big blessing when I started pastoring uh, I didn't mention this but the first pastor that I had I did not teach tithing I told them that they, they could give whatever they want to and that didn't work because a lot of people did not feel to give many of the times they were not generous you know but in my, my third pastorate uh, I started teaching on tithes and and asking the Lord to give me wisdom on how to teach tithes but nonetheless uh, I, because it was the blessings were coming to us we decided to share that with others and as they started tithing the Lord blessed them abundantly I saw some of our members go from having nothing to making six-figure incomes. I, I, I've seen some incredible things, uh, them being blessed in many, many different ways. What I'm trying to say is that in my experience, tithing works. Now let's get to the scriptures. And I'm going to approach this in a different way than others have. Because I want you to understand the concept of tithing in the New Testament. And I'm going to focus on Melchizedek. Because Melchizedek was a high priest of the Lord God before the, the giving out of the law. Way before. And the Bible says that Abraham gave him a tenth of all that he had. Or that he got from the battle. But uh, Genesis 14.20 it says that Abraham gave, gave unto Melchizedek, he gave him tithes of all. So this takes out the just uh, crops or veggies or, or animals, whatever. This includes everything, tithing of all. Now, uh, interesting, uh, but in Hebrews, this is where it starts. The New Testament teaching on, on tithing for New Testament believers. It's that uh, Jesus was called of God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Hebrews 6.20 Even Jesus made a high priest forever after Melchizedek. What does that mean? That the, the Levitical priesthood ended with Jesus Christ. And what started now is the priesthood of the Melchizedek. Uh, and listen to this, Hebrews 7.11 if therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? Wow. The, priesthood of, the Levitical priesthood was changed, and now it is the priesthood of Melchizedek. Hebrews 7.12 says, For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. And Hebrews 7.16, Who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. What changed everything was the, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because being of the order of Melchizedek, Jesus Christ lives forever. And Hebrews 7, uh, 24 says, But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Hebrews 7, 25, Wherefore he is all able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. 
In other words, the, the death of Jesus Christ did not end the priesthood. It started the priesthood of Melchizedek in the heavens. And although Jesus Christ is in heaven, he can save people because he is interceding. He is the high priest according to Melchizedek and he intercedes for everyone. And so uh, people obtain better blessings because Jesus Christ is alive and reigning from heaven. Hebrews 8, 6, But now has he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. So it's important to know this. That yes, uh, when the people teach against tithes, they say we're not under the law. Uh, that's true. But what they fail to teach is that the priesthood continues. Not the priesthood of Aaron, the priesthood of Melchizedek. And its number one representation of the high priest is Jesus Christ, who died, was buried, and rose again from the dead. And he lives to intercede for us. And he is the new covenant, the new blessing. So now we're not talking about uh, the old law, the, 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 the tidings under Aaron. We're talking about Melchizedek. And listen to this. This verse is, to this point, has not been really studied. But it says in Hebrews 7, 8. And here men that receive tithes, but here men that die receive tithes, but there he receiveth them, of whom it is witness that he liveth. When I saw this verse, at first I didn't understand it. When I looked it up in the, in the different uh, commentaries, they didn't understand it either. Someone even suggested that they was referring back to Genesis when it talks about uh, giving to Melchizedek. But that cannot be. Because, it, it, listen to this, but here men that die receive tithes. If you go back to Genesis, if, if, you, if that was referring to that, men died there also. So it's not referring to the time in Genesis, no. But there, he receiveth them. Who? Jesus Christ, the Melchizedek, the high priest, who is reigning in the heavens under a better covenant. But there he receiveth them, of whom it is witness that he liveth. So what I'm trying to tell you is that the tithes are in the New Testament and the tithes are received today by none other than Jesus Christ. We tithe to Jesus Christ. And this is not under the law, but we do it as first fruits. We do it to recognize Jesus and to give Jesus back at least something of what the many things He's given us. Just like Abraham, he gave tithes to Melchizedek out of everything, out of all. We Christians, we tithe also uh, unto the local church. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Pastor Raul, you're, you're, you're slipping something in there. No, listen to me. Jesus Christ is the high priest under the order of Melchizedek, and he receives the tithes because he's still alive. You can't give tithes to anybody else. You have to give them to Melchizedek, which is Jesus Christ. But here we go. Jesus Christ is the head of the church. He is the head of the church. So if we have a local church, guess where the tithings go? And where does the Lord require that you bring the tithings to? To the local church. Because the local church is the body. It, Jesus is the head of the body. And does Jesus want His church to function and grow and move? Yes. And this is why finances can come. And anything else you want to give to the local church is okay. Because you're given unto the high priest under the order of Melchizedek. You're given unto the head of the church, Jesus Christ. And that explains why our members are getting blessed over and over again. And those members, because we don't require tithing. But those that don't tithe in our church are always struggling. And for some reason, their money never really uh, stays with them. If they don't give to the church, I see them give them to the doctor, to the hospital, to the mechanic, uh, given to all other things. I, I know of members who had a thousand, two thousand dollars in an envelope and they lost it. Uh, uh, they don't even know how it happened. They lost it. That could have been given to the church. 
but they gave it to themselves and they lost it. On the other hand, those members that are very faithful tithers, I hear testimony after testimony, report after report that is good, how God comes through for them and instead of them losing money, they find money. Instead of them having troubles here and there, they get rewards, they get blessings from here, from there. I see God sustaining and blessing beyond measure. So this is why I'm teaching this today. And I pray that those of you who are viewing this video will start tithing to a local church. And, you know, wherever God guides you to tithe, that's what you're going to go. That is important. And, I, and I'm telling you, I am being as honest as I can be because I'm a pastor. And one day I'm going to give an account to the Lord Jesus Christ. So I prayed about this video. I said, Lord, uh, some people are going to fight against this video. But I need to tell those who are sincere that there's a place where they can be blessed. Just like Abraham, the, the promise was that blessing, he would be blessed. Abraham was blessed beyond. Well, that's the same thing for believers. Think about it. Jesus is under the order of Melchizedek, and we are of the faith of Abraham. So if Abraham gave tithes to Melchizedek, then we of the faith of Abraham should give tithes to Jesus Christ who is a, of the order of Melchizedek. Now you're seeing it. And the pastors, they reap blessings from there. But the tithings don't go directly to the pastor. They, they go to the different needs of the church. And important to know is that I have told my church that if ever the tithings become very big, then I will cap my salary at a certain uh, place so that the money will go to other things that we are doing or are going to do. Uh, that's not the case. With a, there's a lot of uh, millionaire pastors. I cannot speak for them because I'm, I'm way far away from being a millionaire. But I can tell you this. They will give an account on the Day of Judgment for how they handled their money. So it's not our business. The, the sheep, the members of the church, it's not your business to be pointing fingers. Your business is to give your tithe to the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the local church.